Welcome back. In this video, we're going to be going over all of the additional things that you can add to your videos like titles, effects, transitions, and so much more. Let's dive right into it. One of the first things we want to take a look at is the amazing feature of text to speech. Now for this, I'm going to go ahead and grab one of my YouTube videos actually, because of course it's gotta be something with uh, dialogue in it, which makes sense so we can see our waveforms down here. And converting to text to speech to add captions is incredibly easy in Filmora. You can do it a couple different ways. The first way is going to be right clicking on the clip and you will see speech to text right here, as well as there is a speech to text button over on our tool panel on the left. Either one of these is going to bring up this dialog box where you are going to uh, input the language that the text uh, is being transcribed in. So of course I'm English US here. And you can either choose to convert just the clip you have selected um, or if you have multiple clips selected or you can choose the entire timeline sequence. In this case, I'm just going to do this one uh, long clip. I'm going to hit OK and we can see that's transcoding here. And it's gonna go through its process of converting. And after it finishes, that dialog box closes, and now we see this new uh, clip kind of on top of our other clip that's blue here, and this is basically all of the uh, captioned words throughout the video. And I can actually double click on this, and it's going to open up the subtitle uh, editor. And on the left-hand side, we can basically see the time code and each sentence that it transcribed. And what's great about this is you can go through and if it were to make any typos or maybe there's a word it didn't exactly understand, you can go in and easily edit them to say the correct thing. You can also change the timings and here's kind of another view of the timeline just with the captions. If we were to zoom all the way in, we can see the individual caption sentences. Now what's great is not only can you edit the words in here and the timings, but also the look of everything. You have your standard fonts and kind of uh, text positioning tools up here at the top, but you also have different presets. Uh, so if you want to add some style to it, of course you can select the clip and change it to the style. Now by default, apply all is checked off, which means if we change the style of one, if I go to the next captions here, we can see that they all fall in line with that same text style. But if I turn this off, then I could have this one selected, maybe be blue, go over here, this one's still the pink, maybe yellow on this one. So you can see that as we scrub through these, they're different uh, fonts. So if you're just trying to make it more engaging and have a bunch of different uh, font styles, then you can do that easily here as well. And then under the customize tab, you have a couple more uh, options here to further customize everything. One is a animation where you can choose a fade in and fade out. I'll play that so you can see what it looks like. Of bulk. So if you're moving in tight spaces, it wouldn't be totally crazy to. You can see how after at the end of each one and at the beginning of each one, it fades in and fades out. You also have quick positioning for the text. So you, if you want it to be on top, bottom, right centered, left centered, diagonal, or dead center, this is just a nice quick way to immediately center all of your text in the same exact spot. We have text fill, which is basically going to allow you to further customize this preset so maybe you know you don't necessarily like the yellow we want more green but maybe a bit more faded or maybe you have certain brand colors that you want to stick to then you can choose that add different effects like outline for example you can customize the opacity as well as add some blur uh, just for some extra style and why not you can add a border to your text and adjust the opacity of that as well and add a text shadow or drop shadow, allowing you to put it uh, in any kind of lighting direction you want over here. And again, opacity, blur, and distance changes. And again, if you have apply all checked, then whatever customizing you do to one, it will automatically add it to the rest. 
simply hit OK. And now you have a fully captioned video towards the bottom here. Now that we've done speech to text, we now can show the opposite text to speech. And this is where you can bring in a title. For example, I just have this basic title sitting right here. And of course, we typed in some basic text. Now we're going to go to the same spot where we found speech to text. We're just going to right click here. And I'm going to see now text to speech is an option. I'm going to select that and we are brought up with this dialog box here. Again, first thing we're going to choose is the language that we are dealing with. Of course, English US for myself. And then you have a bunch of different voice names. Now, if you double click on any of them, you will hear a audio sample. Wondershare, creativity simplified. Wondershare, creativity simplified. Wondershare, creativity simplified. Wondershare, creativity simplified. So let's say I like this Lily voice here. Then you have different parameters that you can set. So you can change it to slow. Wondershare, creativity simplified. You can go fast. Wondershare, creativity simplified. Already sounds like one of those commercials where they have to say the terms and conditions uh, incredibly fast. Uh, or, of course, you can go anywhere in between to fine-tune what sounds best for you. Uh, and you can even change the pitch. So if her voice wasn't high enough. Wondershare, creativity simplified. And low enough. Wondershare, creativity simplified. So again, I'm just going to keep these relatively uh, normal here. And then simply just hit OK. And then we can see a new audio file has been placed right below our timeline. So if we zoom in to this and play it back. Welcome to Filmora. And what's nice is it does also add the audio file into your project media as well. So if you needed to duplicate or just bring in this audio file at a later time for some reason, maybe reuse it, it's now fully an asset saved in your project media uh, which you can move to specific bins if you would like. Introduce our video with a title. So I'm going to go up to our uh, different tool panel up here and choose titles. And we can see that we have a bunch of different options on the left-hand side, different categories we can choose from, or we can just scroll through and see what, uh, you know, interests us. We can double click on anything to see how the animation plays out. Uh, let's see. I'm just gonna pick one of these. You know what? This one's not too flashy, but I kind of I'm, I'm a sucker for a good like typewriter effect. I just I don't know. It's like simple, but still has some some spice to it. it seems kind of classy. So I'm just going to drag and drop that onto my timeline. And then I'm going to double click to open up our title inspector. Now to change the text, you can actually just interact with it in your viewer. So to change both of these, I'm going to change this to Chef Kyle Presents. I don't know if his name's actual Kyle. Just sounds good. Chef Kyle Presents Making Food. Super original, I know. And of course, again, you can go in and change fonts to whatever your heart desires. You know what? That looks so good. We're going to change the position, lower it a little bit. You can change the style, add some add some pizzazz to it. Oh, that's kind of cool. What shows that remind me of? I don't know, but I like that. That's, that's pretty cool. And you know what? You can even change the colors. I don't know if I want to. And then I only want this to actually last the first clip because we have that second clip coming in on a beat, which we talked about in our last video. So I'm going to trim that down to uh, to just fit the first clip. Let's see what uh, what this is looking like here. Drag our playhead to the beginning. Love it. Simple, but it looks professional, looks good. I'm happy with it. So that's how we add a title. Everyone loves filters nowadays though. So what if we want to add a filter to the video? So we're gonna go back up to our toolbar here, go under a 
effects and we will see filters on the left hand side here you can see we got a whole bunch of them uh, i have 226 at the time of this recording with the pack that i have installed but of course you can find more on filmora's website and we have all sorts of different types of filters that we can use here and again you can double click on them to watch how they interact with your actual footage kind of kind of like this all right so once you've picked out the filter that you like you can add it to your video in a couple different ways you can indeed just drag it on top of one of your video clips and it will basically be absorbed into that clip you can also see the clip now has this little magic wand icon right there kind of showing that you have a filter applied or if you want to do it to your entire sequence then you can drag it down to the timeline place it over top of whichever video layers you want and now uh, it basically affects everything underneath it so you'll notice if i put my playhead in this gap there's no color difference but as soon as i slide over we now have it applied to everything so obviously you'd want to put this at the start of the clip but now we have our entire video uh, essentially turned on with this filter and on this one it's actually interacted kind of blended in with the video here it's just layered over top you can do it however you like it doesn't actually change the outcome of it but if you do want to interact with the filter on this one double click the clip that's going to bring up that clips uh, inspectors now you're going to go under effects and you will see it right here and you can even change the strength of it so obviously zero is is nothing right it's no filter applied but maybe you just want a little a little touch of it rather than going all the way you can you know maybe around like that 50 percent mark you know it's your video go crazy with it if you want to and so that is how we add filters now what about adding transitions most of the time we're just doing jump cuts right so we have this you know it makes sense kind of we're just jumping around on the same thing but maybe when we kind of change scenes and they actually start cutting and we go from them just talking about it to actually cutting maybe we want to do an actual video transition so back to the toolbox click on transitions we got a ton of them so the most common one ever is a dissolve or a fade and if we just drag that in between the two clips you will see that it kind of almost looks like tape or something kind of overlaying both of these clips here and it's basically showing the transition of one clip to the next if i hit play here you can see they're just going to fade into each other if you want it to happen faster just like your clips go ahead grab one of the ends move them closer to make the band-aid looking things smaller and so now if i play back you can see that fade happens very quick you can adjust it to basically whatever you want super fast or you can go super slow just really oh so elegant <laughs> obviously you can do uh different transitions right you can just click and delete that uh all these other ones get pretty pretty crazy but if they fit your vibe and style then go for it Let's see what this one looks like well it's a beach ball as a professional video editor having effects like this is amazing but please use them responsibly do not have every single clip be a different uh you know transition no one wants to see this go into this into another transition use them very seldomly but there you go that's how you add video transitions now what about some other effects let's hop back into the effects tool here and instead of filters what else is going on we got some overlays now you got a bunch of really cool ones here you have frames which can be cool if you if you like that like film uh you like seeing the film stock on the sides you can add that light leaks always a popular choice uh basically kind of simulates almost not a lens flare but just kind of refractions of light going through the lens you can uh, really play around with these click on them that's going to bring up your inspector panel mess with the opacity at 100 percent. it may be too strong but maybe you know real subtle right around 30 35 percent on this clip 
It's it's just a little bit of texture adds something to it. Pretty cool. We got bokeh blurs, lens flares, old film, damaged film, all these cool stuff that you guys should really go in and play with. Again, if you don't want to be constantly dragging down, you can just double click on it and you can basically see what it's going to look like on your timeline. This is a pretty cool glitch effect, glitch distortion. But there you go. That's how you add different effects to your videos. Continuing on, elements, we got the same sort of idea here. These are basically just graphical elements that you want to add uh, to kind of add flavor. Maybe you want to point to something. Maybe we want to point out that's a uh, zucchini, I think. Cucumber? I don't know. I'm bad at this stuff. I'm just going to go ahead and drag it down to this clip. I'm going to make it the length of my clip. There we go. And of course, it's pointing to nothing. It's giant. We got to change that. So bring up the inspector, double click on it, and we'll have our transform tab first where we can change this here. You can also mess with the sizing by grabbing these arrows, whatever you think is best. And we can just move it around, grab the little bar on top to change rotation. I just want to make this kind of longer. But maybe you don't just want it to pop up. Maybe you want it to kind of animate in at the top. We have some extra tools here. If we go under animation, I personally like kind of sliding in. So I can add that. Beginning and end. And I want it to happen faster. So I'm going to grab this little bar at the bottom that allows you to change your effect. You can see it comes in real quick. We've now added an effects, but you know what? There's a lot of empty space in here. Perfect to tell you what it is that you're pointing at. So I'm going to click out of my inspector for that and go back to my titles here. And I'm going to grab something that comes kind of in a box. You know what? Actually, no, I'm just going to grab the default title, which you know, there's no movement, no crazy effects. I'm going to bring it after it slides in. Double click. And we're going to actually position this inside of the arrow. You know what? Maybe we'll give this a little animation as well, but we'll just have it fade in. So let's see what that looks like. Yeah, the text came before the arrow, so let's start it after. There we go. Cool. Now we have combined both adding a screen element as well as a title to make something cohesive, and that looks pretty cool. So hopefully you guys have a good idea about how to add a bunch of different cool effects, elements, transitions, and everything we talked about in this video to spice up your videos, make them a lot more lively. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video, stick around because we got so much more to talk about in Filmora 11. Thanks for watching.